after multiple complaints about the music? Well, here you go. Here's a re-upload, no music included. My name's Chris, and I repair my own audio equipment, and I also show you how to repair yours. So let's get started. Let's check out the $20 option. I want to talk to you about an app called Audio Function Generator Pro, and I downloaded this on my iPhone. It's $5, and I gave it a try. It's a signal generator app that you can use on your iPhone, and I'm sure there's other app that will work on your Android or your Google phone or whatever it is you've got but I happen to have an iPhone so this is the one I'm using and it worked well within its limitations and it does have limitations and I'll get to those at the end but for the most part for the average person who's trying to troubleshoot their vintage audio equipment this will work well you don't need a high-end signal generator like this one up here that'll cost you hundreds of dollars if you've got a phone and five dollars you can get a signal generator and I just want to show you here how this works a little bit as I said just an app on your phone most of you guys are familiar with that even you, even you old guys like me you can figure that out so you go to the in my case you go to the Apple store you download the app you pay your five bucks and well I've got an app so and it's right here it looks like a speaker and I'll push it and I happen to be in sweep mode and that's one of its functions. but let me go back to the more basic settings here go back to more basic settings and look at the phone here make sure I got it on camera and I'm just going to go to the sine wave. There's several different pages and there's several different functions that this can do. But for you guys who are trying to repair vintage audio equipment and trace a signal through your piece of equipment, normally you're just going to use a sine wave of some value. Usually I use a thousand hertz and just trace it through. If you've got a problem with one channel, you can trace it through. And as I've mentioned before in some of my videos, the great thing about a piece of stereo equipment like this Pioneer SX1050 that's sitting here. If I've got a problem with one channel, I've got the best expert in the world to help me trace it through, and that's the other channel. So if I've got one channel working, and I'm not sure what I'm looking at, all I've got to do is compare the good to the bad, and it's very helpful to repair uh, a problem. So right now we're on 20 hertz. I'm going to bump that up somewhat here, and they've got a little slide, little slider um, that you can bump this up with, or you've got presets and as I said usually what you want to do like I said you can use whatever frequency you want any audio frequency but usually I use one kilohertz so I'm going to hit one kilohertz and it automatically starts to generate the signal you might have seen the scope change our timing here a little bit uh, got where here Let's see so I've got two channels here I've got one on the left channel one scope probe on the left channel one on the right channel and right now it's just generating a thousand hertz tone from my iPhone into the auxiliary port of the 1050 and I've got the volume up here a little bit I'm going to just turn the volume control you can't see the volume control but I got my hand on the volume control of the uh, 1050 and I'm just going to turn it down a notch and and watch the scope accordingly go down. So my point is, uh, why I think this is great is it's cheap, it works, and so if you've got a problem, you can see these two channels are, are fine, right? They're identical. If we bring one, they're perfect, absolutely perfect. So there's no problem here, but what if you had something like, oh, what's this ground there? Let's say you had your right channel, you had audio, and your left channel didn't have audio. You could use the other channel, trace the problem through, through to see where you're losing the audio in the other channel and it works fine I mean there's no problem that's all you need with vintage audio equipment is just to be able to get a signal into it and trace it through some things you just have to use a signal generator for some problems a multimeter will do you but other times you need a signal generator which I'm using my phone and an oscilloscope you have no choice to be able to trace a signal through so I just wanted to show you that and, and as I said it's got all kinds of functions how about a square wave it's got a square wave function like I said for most of you 
you guys. This is all you need, frankly. You just need it to make a sine wave, be able to produce that at a thousand hertz. Most of y'all, you don't have to do anything else. You don't need any of the rest function. But just to show you, it does have a square wave function. I don't know if you can see that on the scope. I think you can. And this is one of the limitations of this app through the phone. It's not the app limitation. It's the iPhone's limitation of generating noise. As you can see on the scope, there's quite a bit of noise on this square wave. And I've already gone through bench testing on this 1050 using my signal generator. And I played around a little bit with the square wave functions and played with the with the tone controls. And the square wave from this signal generator, perfect. You know, perfect high rise, perfectly flat top. And you can see this thing ringing. So, but for you guys who are troubleshooting a problem, who cares if it's got a lot more distortion? It doesn't matter. And you're probably not going to be using a square wave. You can if you want to, but you're probably, I'm going to go back to sine wave, and you're probably just going to need that right there. Trace your problem out. So, I, I mean, I think it's a, a, a neat little app for $5, as long as you got a phone, uh, there's half your problem. Now, that doesn't help you with an oscilloscope, but like an old Tektronics like this, which was state-of-the-art back uh, 40 years ago, let's say, probably, uh, you can get an old Tektronics like this, a couple hundred bucks, uh, maybe, you know, really nice one, 300, and a really beat up one 150 or something but something like this for a couple hundred dollars off of ebay or somewhere of course you got to realize you got a 40 year old scope so you know at any moment here as i'm talking that could be the end of the scope but this was a really high-end scope talk a little bit about textronic scopes these are big bucks these are the price of uh, a good used car 40 years ago and you can get them for next to nothing and i've had this one years and it's worked great and tektronics equipment is just outstanding so if you can get an old Tektronic scope and you're working on vintage audio equipment I, you're golden so as i said i i just think this thing's outstanding L let me just show you something too you can do and again most of you guys if you're going to use these other functions that are available in this app you're probably going to have a higher end signal generator but let's see here i think we can do sweep yeah there we go all right i've already got it set up you can do sweeps from any frequency i could set the start frequency and and then set the stop frequency. And this is how long the sweep's gonna run. It's only gonna run for five seconds. And you can set that to whatever you want, whatever time frame you want. I've got it five seconds. So right now, you can see scope probe, nothing is on there. But as soon as I hit the play button up here, you're gonna see some activity there. And in five seconds, it's going to sweep frequencies from 20 hertz, 20,000. And that's something you may do if you're bench testing a unit like this. But again, if you're doing something like that, you've probably got a higher end signal generator. So, but I'm going to show you how this works. So let's hit play button. Now, can you see the scope starting at a very low frequency and working its way through to the upper frequencies? And up here, it's showing the run of from 20 hertz, 20, now it's up to about five, 6,000. Now it's getting up to about 20,000, but it's in five seconds, it's going through all the frequencies between 20 hertz and 20,000. Now, would you guys be using this with this probably not but it just shows you it's got a lot of a lot of different functions built in this app it may not use uh, but it, it's still it's there for so I'm gonna stop this uh, what else would be important to you guys well one thing it's got two that, that that good I think for for any piece of software if you hit here and you see this little bookmark you know what that's probably is it's got a user's guide so that's not right right build into it you want to go through and use some of the various functions as you've seen it's really not too complicated to use, especially if you're just trying to generate a sine wave. You just take this first symbol, which looks like a sine wave, and you hit the button. And right now, we're at about 5,000 hertz. You could trace it through with 5,000 hertz if you wanted to. Here, I'm moving it with this little slider. I don't know if you see my finger. Probably, I'm just changing the frequency. Go all the way down to a couple hundred. Slide it back up. But again, these are things you're probably not going to use if you're just tracing out a signal. But I think $5 to be able to trace out a problem in your piece of vintage audio equipment, quite a deal. Heck of a lot better deal than some fancy signal generator uh, to do it. But as I've just mentioned, the limitations with this, 
distortion. There's a lot of distortion that doesn't matter if you can trace through this sine wave. But from doing some experimenting compared to my signal generator up here, when I did bench testing on this 1050, it did incredibly well. It most total harmonic distortion I got at any wattage was about 0.03 percent, which is amazing. But when I tested it, this signal generator, it was about 10 times. So it was about 0.2%, 0.3% 0.02 or 0.03%. Quite a big difference. I mean, if you're doing any type of bench testing for power distortion, then this isn't going to work. It just isn't going to tell you much because there's so much distortion in the signal. But what do you expect? I mean, you've got a phone that's trying to be a signal generator. Is it going to work as well as a piece of equipment that that's its only job in life? No. It, it, it's just not going to work. But as far as being able to generate sine wave that can fix a piece of vintage audio equipment, I wouldn't need that. This is all I'd need. I would not need that at all to be able to repair a piece of equipment that I was trying to find a problem with with one channel. So I, I think it's a I think it's a wonderful uh, app. And for five dollars, holy smoke, you know, skip a beer out or a Starbucks or whatever. It's basically a no brainer to me for uh, anybody who's getting into vintage audio troubleshooting to download an app and you've got a signal generator right there in your pocket it works well where this iphone signal generator app is not acceptable is on the test bench when you're trying to do distortion tests with a piece of audio equipment the output just is too high in distortion to be able to be used. Now I'm going to hit the play button here and it's going to generate a thousand hertz tone through both the left and the right channel. And you can see over here the audio analyzer saw it. So both channels are quite even. Uh, you know, no issues there. You know, the audio output from both channels just about like it was with my higher end signal generator. Now when I look at the distortion so each channel's putting out a little over a, a, a watt a channel. When I go to take a look at the harmonic distortion, it's about 0.2%. What that's showing there, 1.31 watt. And I'm channel A, which is the um, which is the left channel. Now that's much higher than when I generate sine wave with my signal generator. It's not a huge surprise that there's a lot more distortion generated by an iPhone. I mean, the iPhone is everything. It tries to be everything everyone and there's going to be some compromise and this is the one with this is the distortion level is about 10 times higher than signal gen so even though you can use this app for troubleshooting as far as using it as a signal generator when you're trying to test the distortion uh, with a piece of vintage audio equipment it really wouldn't be acceptable here's a short look when I was bench testing this SX 1050 with my test bench signal generator take a a look at how low that distortion was even when I was running this receiver up to and past its maximum 120 watts per channel 120 still under 0.03 124 127 oh there we're starting to go up a little bit 0.04 we're not far from rolling over there we go 134 still under its rated 0.1 134 a channel i get a little excited when i bench test some of my equipment hopefully here before too long i'll have a complete video up on this pioneer sx 1050. other than the audio function generator pro app the only thing you need if you have an iphone like i did is a lightning to rca cable and I ended up using a Apple certified cable because I wanted to make sure I was using the best cable possible in this test. There are other Lightning to RCA cables that are about half the price. So I think you can find one for probably seven, eight dollars, unlike the one that I bought for about sixteen dollars. But either way, anywhere in that fifteen, twenty dollar range, I think this is quite the value for anybody who's looking to get in to an inexpensive signal generator that will help them troubleshoot their vintage audio equipment. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and for you guys who aren't subscribers, please hit that subscribe button. For my present subscribers, as always, thank you so much. Y'all have a good day.